All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and we are here to check out a 2008 Lexus ISF. And who do we have to thank for this opportunity? It is none other than Anchor Auto Outlet in Cary, Raleigh, North Carolina. So all their information will be down in the description box below. And this particular vehicle has about 113,000 miles on it. And let me tell you guys, when I jumped into this vehicle, I was absolutely stunned. This is not far off from a brand new automobile i kid you not this is so well kept whoever the previous owner of this car was it is in perfect condition and the best part is the reason why i come to this dealership is because you can even purchase an aftermarket warranty with this vehicle and uh, i know a lot of you lexus freaks are like oh you don't need it because it's a lexus and i know i know i know but it's you know nice to have right it's nice to have that option if you will but Enough of that, all their info's down below, and let's just get on with this review, shall we? Because this is a car I've been wanting to test drive for some time now, because I actually did a review on a Lexus IS250, right? And I'll be honest, that car was pretty damn sloppy. It was kind of all over the place. It was like a nice little highway cruiser of a vehicle. That's exactly what that was. And I had a lot of roll with it. Honestly, it felt like a rear wheel drive ES to me. And uh, that, that kind of shocked me because this generation of car, right? Let me, first of all, let me start off with the looks because these cars, they look razor sharp. They look phenomenal. I mean, they are some of the most timeless designs I have ever seen. And I really appreciate that. So it's got that going on for it. And the drive just did not match with the way that this car looks. But let's see if the ISF kind of fixes that. Nice little induction tone. I always like to hear that, of course. But you let me know in the comment section if you like the way that this vehicle looks. Because I'm more interested in the way that this vehicle drives. Uh, to uh, take this bad boy out on the highway in a little bit but well first of all the brakes are fantastic that's great that's uh, mandatory in this world of idiots on the road so that's great love to see that obviously this is the f and i know i only drove the is 250 not even the f sport edition but uh, you know that was the general demeanor of this car and that's what this vehicle is based upon this car did not have a very large uh, budget for lexus to produce so it was built upon that kind of sloppy little chassis i will say however the one good thing it had going on was the excellent suspension geometry that this vehicle has so you know it's going to handle well and ride really well because it's got double wishbones up front and a multi-link in the rear and that is truly excellent and i appreciate that let's go by here and just peg it definitely built naturally and pulls very hard after the 4500 rpm just like the lc and just like the rcf actually so very happy i got to drive those vehicles yeah this thing effortlessly gets up to power power is not an issue with this five liter v8 this 416 horsepower 371 pounds feet of torque is absolutely sensational and those are some great output that's some great numbers now it's obviously not as much as the 471 or whatever that the new rcfs and the lc 500s are producing but uh you know the core that engine still carries on you know this is one of the most reliable bulletproof performance engines and why it's so highly sought after you know this is a mint condition car it's like 20 g's right now so that's a great thing to take advantage of and yes, the RCF and the LC500, they use like a slightly different tuned version of this exact same engine. And this engine feels pretty much identical to those cars. And the only difference is, well, this 8-speed transmission, right? This is one of the first 8-speed transmissions in the world. Technically, it was first unveiled, I believe, in the LS460. And this is pretty much like a different variation of that. This is a more sport-tuned version of that engine, basically. Still got a sound tube basically like an, an induction tube inside of the engine or like the intake so it actually kind of feeds in that intake sound phenomenal love hearing that tone man that's um it brings you such a great sensation it's not the fastest thing in the world not by a long shot but the thrust the feeling you know everything i liked about the rcf and the lc 500 is actually here and you know what it corners 
pretty damn well. It's definitely nowhere near as sloppy as that IS-250. Thank God it's not. Uh, I feel like even if you got a IS-250 F Sport, it wouldn't be half bad actually, so that's good. Nice tight U-turn busting because you know, it's a very petite car actually. Do you have to get in on that power a little bit? This thing does downshift pretty good. The paddles only do so much. Paddles are kind of slow to react, but I kind of uh, expect it as much. When you leave it in the regular automatic mode, it's not bad. It's definitely not as good as, you know, the RCF's uh, transmission of today, but it's this is totally acceptable. Like, if you bought this car in the used car market, like, as, like, a relatively cheap performance car, you'd be really satisfied with it. It's not going to set your world on fire, but like the RCF and the LC500, they are great street cars. These are not as sharp as the M3s, uh, nor of the time or of today. Um, it's just, it is what it is. These are softer cars, and I totally appreciate and respect that because this compliance in the chassis and the suspension is kind of what makes these cars great to drive every day. Got a little Audi S4 in front of us. You know, that's a fine vehicle, but you know what? This one has character. You know, it's not about the straight line performance, although it's pretty good. It's like, what, 4.8 seconds to 60. That's not bad at all. Uh, it just doesn't give you all the thrust up front. You have to build it progressively. And like I mentioned that multiple times in the RCF and the LC500 videos. But, uh, you know, for a compromised build for a vehicle where they didn't have much to go off of, I mean, no, they, they didn't accomplish like a razor sharp uh, automobile. What they have accomplished here is basically Once again, a, a great street car that is rewarding to drive on the street. You do need to get in on that throttle a little bit. You do have to you know, have a bit of patience with this car, but you know what? It does everything that you kind of need it to do. There is, of course, some roll with this vehicle. But it's not ridiculous. It's all well contained. I think a lot of it has to do with the great kind of suspension of this car. This car would sound monstrous with a, uh, <laughs> with a, um, what do you call it? An exhaust on this vehicle. That would be amazing. This car is pretty quiet. And you know, I said this about the IS250 as well. This is a quiet car. It rides beautifully. That's what I'm saying, man. That compliance is great for a street car. And doing some legitimate speeds, there's no wind noise. You know, usually these Toyota Lexus cars, they always have some wind noise. It doesn't. Just a little bit of tire noise, which is totally acceptable with this car. Again, very refined. And that tire noise, you know, this thing is riding on, you know, 19 inch wheels, 225s up front, 255s in the back, some Yokohama nonsense tires. Put some Continentals on here or something like that. Uh, I think this will be a very refined experience and you'll still have great grip so that's great yeah this five liter v8 engine such a gem it's definitely one to take advantage of in this era of just bs hybrids evs all that stuff you know where they're even they're taking the v8 cars and quieting those down i mean in this in that type of world you get this for 20 g's and luckily whoever owned this car previously has just done a phenomenal job i don't really have much to complain about with this car it's just like don't expect like you got you got to change your mindset. I've just driven so many Lexus cars. I kind of know what to expect. I kind of expected this car to, you know, drive and feel this way. My only concern was kind of this transmission, but this is not as laggy and stupid as the LS 460 that I used to own. So that's good and that's what this transmission is roughly based upon. So uh, I'm glad that this is actually like a legitimately decent transmission, but it's not Ferrari quick to respond. It's not a razor sharp chassis or anything like that. Don't expect those things. Uh, go into this knowing that you're going to be getting a comfortable car with a gem of a motor, basically, with decent uh, road handling capabilities, enough to satisfy you on a on street driving, basically. Not, I would not take this out to a racetrack, basically, ever. Um, that's just not what this is intended for. And this interior is also very solid. You know, I didn't mention this in the drive, but like you know, there are no creaks and rattles with this thing whatsoever. Let's see here, I'm gonna bust this little corner right here. Let's see, just a bit of that roll, but I totally forgive it. I mean, it's rear wheel drive, you know, you can kind of uh, uh, let the rear end loose if you want to turn off the trash control. Great stuff there. Uh, steering is also really natural. Perfectly weighted. Love that. There's no stupid modes in here, I don't believe. 
So with all those driving things out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get into that interior, that oh so wonderful solid interior space, right? Yeah, when you touch, like when I first got into this particular model, right? Like the way, like this is so refined, I mean, dude, this steering wheel feels like nobody's even held it before. It is, there's no wear on it at all. The only wear I found with this car is actually in the um, in the seat bolster right here for the driver's side. That is it. That is the only piece of wear that I could find or detect with this car to see that it's even been used at all. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This has just been really well taken care of. I mean, it made me wonder if somebody actually replaced this steering wheel, but I don't think so. This is an OEM F Sport steering wheel, so there's that. You got a nice little backup camera right here, but I will say there's no guidance lines with that backup camera. But it's just nice to have, I guess, you know, kind of inch in there, right? Now that we have this car parked, yeah, love this. Dude, I can't get enough of the steering wheel. It's like perforated and it's like brand new, basically, love it. And, uh, you know, paddle shifters look phenomenal. They feel great. It's just not worth using in this car, unfortunately. It's not as quick to respond. It's okay, it's not terrible, but, you know, I guess it's nice to have, right? You got these automatic headlights. You got one touch up and down windows. There is no double pane glass, but even without it, this car is very quiet in terms of wind noise. So I love that. The biggest negative with this car is just how tight it is. That is the biggest problem I have with this vehicle. It is just very cramped, even for me. You know, it's a bit of a claustrophobic interior space. If you're like larger than six feet and a little bit wider, you might not have a fun time in this car, but you know, for people under six feet tall, I mean, and you're a little bit more slender, then yeah, this is kind of perfect, I suppose. I will say something about these mirrors, they're like a little bit off, surprisingly. I don't know what it is about them, but I just, maybe I just need to get used to the car, whatever. But um, anyway, yeah, a little bit tight, but you know, headroom is not an issue for me. I got plenty of headroom. It's just like the width of the car is pretty narrow. So that's the only thing. Dude, this white carbon fiber thing, I love this. In this center stack, everything is so freaking solid in here. I love it, dude. I mean, there's just no real like wear, tear, anything like that with this particular vehicle. You know, you open these things up, it's like really, it's great. I mean, there's not a lot of storage space in here, but it's just like everything, you know, just the fit and finish of this thing. You know, this is why this car is so sought after. You get one in this clean condition like this. Okay, you got that V8 and you got the Lexus build quality to go along with it. You know, it's not some rattle box tin can with 100K miles on it like an M3 would be. Uh, this is solid, well built, and drives great enough. So I love it, man. So that's, that's the great parts about it. Uh, but just make sure it's, you know, make sure this interior space is big enough for you. Uh, maybe try out like a regular IS250 or something, sit in that and see if that's appropriate for you. But anyway, um, you got a little infotainment screen here. You know, it's very similar to the LS460 of the time. I mean, it shows you some good, good information, I suppose. Uh, reacts decently well. However, I will say that the other big negative I found with it is that the climate control is totally integrated with the screen. That's the only sucky part. But otherwise, you know, I don't really have too much of an issue with this uh, interior cabin in terms of, uh, you know, using at least it's like a big you know buttons right here inside of the touch screen so you don't get super confused so i guess that's okay um you got the mark levinson in this particular car you know what it actually sounds pretty good so i do appreciate them throwing that in there or whoever spec this car out initially they got it like that so that's fantastic and you do have heated seats here as well for the front two seats of course I like the geometries as a whole, you know, like this door handle looks very cool. Again, very solid and I appreciate that. Very nice thing to interact with. You know, I just drove a Rolls Royce Ghost actually. You know what, this interior is more solid than that. Just keeping it real. That Rolls Royce at 50K miles is us over double that and it's actually a more of a solid interior space. So there's that. These seats are stupid comfortable. I like how like ultra bolstered up they are. Um, <laughs> and they're kind of like a big seat too. So, you know, that's very cool. You got the F branding on the side. Very nice uh, seat, of course, you know, nice old perforations and uh, they've held up extremely well, especially for this passenger side, just some of this driver's side bolster wrinkling. That's it. Uh, that's, that's to be expected though. Not much space in the center console. And you got a little bit of space in the glove box, so that's decent. You do have a sunroof, actually, and it's got like this suede-ish headlining material. Very nice. I do like that. It's very soft, similar to what you get in the LS460. This is a very nicely equipped automobile, actually. I do like this. This is a great car. On Damn, dude, if this is like all-wheel drive, damn, I, I would want this for myself as a daily driver, but it's rear-wheel drive. Man, this is, a, this is a fun little car. Uh, I really appreciate what this has to bring to the table, but uh, let's talk about those rear seats now. I mean, again, petite nature vehicle. I mean, this car, 
it's about the same size like a Civic or like a Corolla in terms of rear seating space. So that's the only unfortunate part. Um, but hey, I, I can still fit behind myself and I can still travel back there because the seats are, continue to be comfortable back there. Still the same great leather qualities. And uh, yeah, I can still fit behind myself. I'm five foot eleven, so that's pretty good. Plenty of headroom, like I mentioned. And um, you know where it makes up for is actually the trunk. The trunk is massive, great size trunk. You even have a spare tire underneath. So that is fantastic. I mean, that is, you can fit a lot of things and there is a pass through as well. So I appreciate that. And I don't think you can fold down the seats, but you do have that pass through, which is great. And that, that helps in the practicality of this car because you know, screw the passengers, you know, who, who cares about that? Honestly, who cares if they're actually comfortable or not? You're comfortable behind the driver's seat because the, what do you call it? This uh, driving position is excellent and I appreciate that. And uh, you have plenty of space in the trunk, so that's great. And uh, I forgot to mention this car weighs about 3,800 pounds, which is not bad actually, so I forgot to mention that. But uh, yeah, that'll pretty much, all right. Well, that will pretty much conclude my review on the ISF. Hopefully you found value with me taking a look at this car. Um, it's about what I expected it to be, like a slightly softer, m3 or like a bmw with a great motor good comfort um and a decent transmission you know i was i was pleasantly surprised with this i mean don't get me wrong this is not as good as what's offered today but it's good enough you'll be satisfied this with this and for like 20 g's you get it in great condition like this you will be so freaking happy with i would be happy owning this car so and you can do all kinds of fun stuff put an exhaust on here it would sound thunderous especially with that uh intake tubing that this car has sounds great man so take advantage of it in the used car market if you want this particular car uh hit up anchor auto they will be i'm sure willing to ship this out to you of course you can get this car with a warranty if you so choose uh, which i would probably suggest simply because you know parts might cost a lot with this car and uh, yeah have, have fun with it do your thing with it and let me know if you're an owner let me know and uh, if you've driven the uh, rcfs and the gsfs and the lc 500s let me know how they all compare uh, with this car for you so thank you again for watching Take care and goodbye.